In the Northern Hemisphere, October evokes thoughts of crunchy leaves, jack-o'-lanterns, and yes, even those pumpkin-flavored drinks and treats. It also signals a full turning of the seasons. After the equinox in September, we're into aurora season, and it turns out to be meteor season too. This year, the October night sky is going to be a great one. As in years past, October is meteor season. There are seven meteor showers that reach peak activity during the month. There are also chances to see asteroids, dwarf planets, and other planets in our solar system too. Be sure to mark your calendar for October 21st, the peak of the Orionids meteor shower and highlight of the month. October 2nd, Annular Solar Eclipse. I often get questions about whether these events are visible in the Southern Hemisphere. I always try to note those events that are specific, only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. But the reality is that most astronomy events are visible only in the Northern half of the globe. But here we go, kicking off October. Southern Hemisphere Sky Viewers, this one's for you. On the 2nd, the moon will pass in front of the sun, creating an annular solar eclipse where the ring of fire will be visible from southern Chile and southern Argentina. A partial eclipse will be visible across most of southern South America. Regions seeing at least a partial eclipse, south in North America, much of South America, Pacific, Atlantic, Antarctica. October 5th, peak of the Camelopardalid meteor shower. I said the October night sky would be full of meteors, and the first week of the month underscores my point. As constellations go, Camella Pardalis is one of the more overlooked ones in the sky. Camella Pardalis is a large constellation that represents a giraffe and sits between Ursa Major and Cassiopeia. It's also home to a meteor shower, the Camella Pardalids, which will peak this year on the night of October 5th. These ones are officially the October Camelopardalids. There's a new meteor shower called the May Camelopardalids that astronomers have recently discovered too. Unfortunately, the October Camelopardalids aren't the most active and only peak at a maximum zenithal hourly rate, ZHR, of five meteors per hour. October 8th, peak of the Draconid meteor shower, radiating from the constellation. Draco, the dragon, this Northern Hemisphere constellation will be spotted near the bright star of Vega. In 2024, the meteor shower is expected to peak around midnight on October 8th, so overnight from the 8th to 9th, this is prime stargazing time, and this year, the moon will be in its waning crescent phase with an illumination of 32%. The Draconid's meteor shower isn't as active as other meteor showers, with a variable ZHR each year, especially compared with the Orionids later in the month. The Draconids are exceptionally unreliable when it comes to predicting meteor activity. Most years, it is a minor shower. In some years, it exceeds the superactive Perseids and Geminids. And in 2011, astronomers reported over 600 meteors per hour during the peak. October 10th, peak of the Southern Torrid Meteor Shower. Despite their name, the southern torrid meteor shower is actually visible in the northern hemisphere. Instead, the southern torrids are so named due to a split in the torrid's meteor shower caused by gravitational perturbations, especially from Jupiter, that have resulted in two different branches of the meteor shower. All that said, the best night to see the southern torrids will be on October 10th this year. The northern torrids will peak on November 12th. On this night, you can expect to see a maximum of five meteors per hour. October 11th, peak of the Delta Origid meteor shower. Going for bingo on the meteor showers this month? Here's another chance to see more. The Delta Origid meteor shower will peak on the night of October 11th. The radiant point is highest in the sky after dawn, at around. And so the shower is likely to produce its best displays shortly before dawn, when its radiant point is highest. I'll be honest though, Delta Origids aren't the most stimulating, with a maximum ZHR of two per hour. Just keep an eye out for them if you happen to be out stargazing early this morning anyway. October 12th, Comet C, 2023A, 
Three Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas at perigee. Visibility of the comet in the morning sky will continue into the opening days of October, but thereafter, views will shift into the evening sky, where it is hoped that Tsuchinshan Atlas will put on its best show. A clue to what might be seen for its evening performance might be revealed by its tail toward the end of September. If the tail appears visually short but bright and can be readily spotted in the brightening dawn twilight at that time, then something spectacular could be in the offing for us during the second and third weeks of October. In addition, when the comet passes between the Earth and Sun on October 12, dust particles ejected from its nucleus could scatter sunlight in a forward direction and cause a dramatic upsurge in the comet's brightness, perhaps briefly making it as bright as Jupiter or even Venus. October 17th, full supermoon. This month, the moon reaches full phase at around the same time that its elliptical orbit also makes its closest approach to the Earth, called its perigee, the hunter's moon. The sequence of full moons that fall through the year are sometimes assigned names such as the hunter's moon, according to the months and seasons in which they fall. October 18th, peak of the Epsilon Geminid meteor shower. Another night, another chance to see meteors. On the night of October 18th, the Epsilon Geminide meteor shower will peak at a maximum ZHR of three per hour. This year, the E. Geminids are going to be high in the northern sky and only visible to those above 60 degrees north on the globe. It is worth noting that the full moon occurs on the 17th, so that will interfere with your meteor viewing prospects. But don't let that stop you if the skies are clear. October 20th, peak of the Orionid meteor shower. The greatest night sky event in October is undoubtedly the Orionid's meteor shower which is expected to peak on October 20th this year. While the meteor shower occurs from October 16th to 30th, there may be up to 21 meteors per hour during the shower's peak, likely in the late hours of the 20th and into the 21st. The Orionids are easy to spot since they originate from a point in the night sky near the highly recognizable constellation Orion. Look for Orion in the eastern sky if you're trying to see this meteor shower. In 2024, the constellation Orion should be visible throughout the night, making this one of the best meteor showers of the year, and certainly of the month. Close Approaches and Lunar Occultations in October Like 2023, 2024 is a big year for lunar occultations, that is, times when the moon passes in front of other objects in the night sky, from our earthly perspective, of course. Of course, the moon is always passing in front of stuff but certain lunar occultations are notable, particularly when it passes in front of another planet in the solar system. Unlike in recent months, there are no lunar occultations in October, but there are several great close approaches when the moon appears very close in the sky with another solar system object. Here are the close approaches in October. October 5th, close approach of the moon and Venus, two degrees, 48 minutes apart in Libra. October 14th, close approach of the Moon and Saturn, 6.0 arc minutes apart in Aquarius. October 21st, close approach of the Moon and Jupiter, 5 degrees 47 minutes apart in Taurus. October 23rd, close approach of the Moon and Mars, 3 degrees 49 minutes apart in Gemini. Enjoy these extra events to spice up your nights of stargazing, and you'll gain a greater appreciation of just how much there is to see out there. Do you have questions or comments about these events in the October night sky? Or are there others I missed and should add to this list? Let me know in the comments below. For space updates, subscribe to Secrets of Space.